<laughs> Phew, that was crazy. These things are 80 pounds a piece. So that's a total of 240 pounds we got stacked up in here, six feet off the floor. Welcome to Echo Habs for Earth, where we share practical solutions for sustainable living. You're looking at our fully wired off grid solar system, the EG4 6000 XP inverter, and Life Power 4 battery bank, all powered by solar. We'll show you how we assemble the system, start it up, and test it with our home appliances. We'll also demonstrate the Insightful Monitoring app for displaying real-time performance data. Let's get started. This system includes three rack-mounted Life Power 4 48 volt, 100 amp hour batteries wired in parallel, providing about 15 kilowatt hours of storage. The 6000 XP inverter manages the system with two MPPT solar charge controllers and a 50 amp split phase 240 volt output. We added a load sub panel with one 240 volt and two 120 volt circuits for system testing. Okay, our EG4 Life Power 4 battery rack is all wired up. Let's have a look. On the left side, we have our positive common block with the three battery wires and the inverter wire. On the right side is our negative common block. Again, three battery wires and an inverter wire. You notice that the inverter wires are diagonal for even charging and discharging of the battery bank. We have our communications cables from battery to battery, as well as our orange communication cable going back to the inverter. Our ID switches are set with the top battery as battery one, the host, battery two, and battery three as slaves. So communication is primarily done through the host. Now we'll have a look at the inverter side. All right, here's our battery communication cable, our battery terminal cables, positive and negative, our earth ground hooked up back here to the earth ground bar, and our PV wires coming in from the solar panels for both charge controller channels, and then our output load. This is a split phase, 240 volt load wire, heading out to a sub panel where we have a 240 volt and two 120 volt breakers controlling a 240 volt receptacle and a couple of 120 volt receptacles. This is gonna allow us to do all kinds of testing on both 240 and 120 volt appliances. All right, we're gonna get this cover on and fire this baby up. For solar input, we use two arrays of five Suniba 340 watt panels each, one oriented southeast for morning sunlight, the other southwest for the afternoon. Each panel is angled to our latitude for maximum efficiency. We use portable solar ground mounts for ease in maximizing solar input with changing seasons. Each array is wired in series, connecting positive to negative across the panels to increase voltage and minimize transmission losses. All panels are grounded to earth for safety. Okay, one important thing I forgot to mention, and that's the dongle. All right, this is really, really critical. It allows your phone and your computer to talk to this, and it's, it's amazing how, how easy it was to set this up. So you download the app, and you need to do this. And then the app, through the app and the magic of the internet, you can even go up to your computer and pull up your system, and it allows you to, to update the firmware if you need to and control a lot of the settings. So that was really helpful. Now that we have everything installed and wired up, let's go through the startup procedure for the new EG4 off-grid inverter system and battery rack. We're gonna start with the battery breaker. Flip that in the on position. Then we come over to our battery bank. The reason we put the battery breaker on first is as we energize the batteries, we also want to energize the electronics in the inverter. So we're going to put on the BMS systems for all three batteries and then flip on the circuit breakers. The four green lights tell us we're fully charged and the little light here where it says run tells us that these batteries are ready to go. All systems go. The blinking lights tell us that the batteries are communicating to each other and also back to the inverter. Now let's go back to the inverter. You can see the fan just kicked on because we turned the batteries on. Now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna turn on the solar panels. This is the PV disconnect switch. Now we have solar energy coming in from outside. We're gonna come over here 
and whoops, we're gonna come over here and flip on the EPS output. This energizes the load center. These load breakers will now be active. So we're gonna flip our load circuit breaker up. We don't have the grid hooked up, but we don't have a generator. Our circuit breaker is ready. Our outlets are energized. All set to go. There are several options for monitoring the system. The LCD on the 6000 XP provides basic information, but can be difficult to read and interpret. Fortunately, there are more effective monitoring tools like the EG4 phone app, which provides a nice overview of the system, and my favorite, the EG4 monitoring website. The website offers detailed, yet easy to understand, graphics of real-time energy use, battery charge levels, a daily performance graph, monthly and yearly historical trends, and even the ability to inspect and modify system setup parameters, and so much more. Essentially everything you need to remotely manage an off-grid system. Now we'll test the system's performance during midday when solar input is at its peak. We will add loads while measuring the output power, concluding with running a couple of room air conditioners to see if the system can keep up with our summertime demand. Okay, here we are at the start of our test. I have this system shut down. You see our battery is almost fully charged, 99%. Since we're not drawing any power, it's not bringing anything in from the solar panels. First, we plug in our whole house water pump connected to our outside rainwater collection system. All right, our water pump is on. You can see now that we are drawing enough from the solar panels to run the water pump, which is 492 watts. Our battery is staying stationary at 99% charged. Next, we add in some essential household loads, including our electric cooler, chest freezer, tool charging cabinet, and computer workspace. This is how we're doing with the essential loads on along with the water pump. We're up to 554 watts of draw and that is 100% covered from the solar panels. Oh, we just bumped into uh, a charging mode. We have a little excess power. The uh, sun just came out from behind a cloud, I guess, and that excess energy is now topping off the battery. For hot days, we had two 12,000 BTU room air conditioners alongside all the appliances we've already connected. Here we are with both room air conditioners on, all of our other appliances, including the water pump running. We're still only drawing 1320 watts, so we can now run both ACs and all of our appliances in the middle of the day, 100% covered by our 10 solar panels, two arrays of five. Based on these test results, we've decided to add two additional solar panels to our outside arrays. This will bring us up to 12 panels to efficiently run our primary appliances and loads and bring the batteries up to a full charge during the day. That's our off-grid solar system. Wired, installed, and tested. The EG4 6000 XP and Light Power 4 batteries deliver reliable performance. You can find resources for building your own system in the description along with a nod to Signature Solar for their prompt and knowledgeable support. If you found this technical walkthrough helpful, please like the video and subscribe to Echo Habs for Earth for more sustainable living projects. And please, share your thoughts and ideas in the comments. We respond to all of them. Thank you for watching.